All right, I think we're in the clear. Welcome back, guys. Oh, my microphone's on really loud, sorry. Um, I'm back today with a new guest. I have my friend Marissa with us. Say hi. Hi. This is her first time doing a podcast, so she might be a little awkward, sorry. A little terrified. <laughs> um, we are camping this weekend down in southern Iowa. Um, it's about a two-hour drive. Is that what it is for you guys? Yep, two hours. About two hours for me, too. Um, but we're down here at River Valley Campground in Farmington, Iowa, and they're doing a TV show here this weekend. So some nice ladies just drove by and filmed us sitting here with our microphones for <laughs> their TV show. So if you have RFD TV, you might catch us on there on the Best of America. That's what it's called. Best of America by Horseback. Yeah, I've, n I've never seen it. Have you, have you seen it? I haven't seen it, but it's been on the, the air for like 20 years this oh. year. Wow. I We used to get RFD TV like at my dad's house a long time ago, like on the regular TV channels, like not even cable or anything. Oh, wow. But I haven't seen RFD TV in a long time. Yeah. I don't think my grandparents even get it, which is surprising because my grandpa likes to watch that kind of thing. But. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it in years, but... I don't know if I can get it. I should see if I can get it at, um, cause we have like a Roku TV, but they have their own channels. Like you can just get on Roku live TV and like search their channels and stuff. Yeah. We have like YouTube TV, but then like the Hulu, the Netflix, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, but we do have a Roku TV. So oh. who knows what my Yeah. If you go on are. like, like just your home and you go to live TV, like Roku, I think has its own like oh, channels. Yes. I've noticed that, and then we noticed that after we got YouTube TV. Oh. So. <laughs> well, we, we have, like, Netflix and everything, too. But, but yeah, so they're filming today. We went on a trail ride this morning, which was nice. It was a big ride. There was a lot I was, lot like, really surprised. People. There was, I don't know, 50, yeah. probably 50 horses there. And they have a bunch of their own volunteers are the volunteers in the red shirts are they like with the campground or are they with the show the campground to my knowledge i think there might have been a couple of them that were with the show but like the rest of them are for sure with the campground gotcha like we talked to a guy yesterday that like him and his dad were riding like a mother mother daughter pair of horses from here oh that were bred here at river valley and they help out here yeah hmm well, yeah, it's weird that they're, if they're volunteers, because, like, I would think this place would have, has a lot of paid staff. Yeah. Right? It, so why don't they just use their paid staff or whoever's on staff for the day? It takes a village. Yeah. This place is pretty big. I think this is the only equestrian campground, at least in Iowa, that has any sort of, like, cabins or anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. I, don't, I can't think of a single other I mean, one. we've looked at trying to go to other campgrounds that Thomas will actually go to if there's cabins, and, like, none of them have, they're all primitive. Or, like, just have hookups, but there's yeah. no cabins or buildings you can rent at all. Um, we are filming outside also, so if you hear some background noises, sorry. Too bad, so sorry. <laughs> we just are outside because Thomas is in my cabin playing video games. So, we're just outside enjoying the weather. At least we got a nice weekend. Like, this weekend's not bad. I was really worried when we were thinking, like, September, October for this outing. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, it's going to be so cold. Oh, yeah. Well, they were saying last week that it was supposed to be like 90s or like <laughs> super hot this week. And then it never got that warm. Disgusting. So, yeah, I brought BB along and she did the ride fine this morning. I could tell she was getting a little tired towards the end. But, um, yeah, so we're going to read some Reddit stories today since this is Marissa's first time. <laughs> and... um you can give us your opinion on some of these. I just saved like some ones that I thought were funny or some ones that I could relate to. So this first one I actually just thought was funny because it's English and Marissa is getting into English writing. Oh yeah. You should tell us a little bit about your experience as a horse girl. Yeah. Okay. So I started like riding my own pony when I was three and a half. So they, they put me on double before that and then three and a half hit and they're like, okay, she gets her own pony. She's figuring it out from here on out and have rode western for see i'm 22 so 18, 20 years pretty much yeah basically 20 years and um i got out of it sold my horse was like i'm gonna move to the city and 
just not deal with the responsibility. <laughs> and it's been nice to just riding other people's horses. Thanks, Michaela. That's seriously the way to do it. <laughs> but I'm going to get into English riding now and try competing hunter under saddle. So there wish you me go. luck. So you had multiple horses growing up. I had so many horses growing up, I couldn't count them all. Yeah. Marissa and I are kind of the opposite where I got handed like unbroke cheap horses and my dad said here you go this is what you get and marissa had like <laughs> like 10 by the time we were in middle school so yes ex-horse girl that still rides and now is doing english so this one i thought was funny um this is on most of these are from the r slash equestrian reddit thread and i'll usually just save one that i find funny or something of the like and someone posted this picture of a saddle pad like by the girth area and it says horse dad here my wife hurt her leg so i'm at a dressage show are these pads really one-time use i think i cut a tag off of one every show my daughter has me take her to <laughs> oh, no. and it's a lemieux saddle pad like a dressage saddle pad so apparently his daughter is using a new one every time they go to a show oh. so he's just curious asking the reddit thread if they are actually single use. That's highly unfortunate. <laughs> um, I think my dad bought me like one saddle pad, maybe two, my entire horse career. And was like, no, this is what you get. And they maybe were like 30 bucks. Oh, yeah. And these look, that Lemieux stuff is like that's ex ex nice that's stuff. That's high end. Yes. So she's using a new one at every show. Somebody put this meme of like Bart Simpson just disappearing <laughs> into the bushes. <laughs> I know nothing. I know nothing. I know Somebody nothing. said, I'm both impressed slash don't want to blow her up on the spot, but yikes, she's lying. Yeah. Dad doesn't look at the finances, evidently. Yeah, apparently not. Um, there's BB saying hi, if you guys can hear her back there. Okay. This first story isn't too long. It's called Borders Complaining. And we forgot to mention Marissa's grandma owned like a small boarding type gig. Yes. What do you call it? It's um, not like a boarding barn, but like... She just... They own their own farm and board to people that she decides she likes until, you know... She's tired of them. Yeah, basically. Which, owning owning a barn that you have borders at can be very... I can't even think of the word. Exhausting. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Sorry if I read badly. Um, I haven't had anything to drink today, but you know how it goes. Hi, I have a question for everyone here. I'm blessed to help run a beautiful farm with a large grassy fields that get fertilized, rested, and rotated for pasture health. I know not many places get the luxury of field rotations and lush grass, so it's very nice. I do pasture rotations in order to keep the grass and pastures maintained. After having horses on them for two weeks now, I mow them and let them rest for a few days. I have six fields in rotation. Now that the backstory is over, I have two particular boarders who are complaining about the lush grass. Both of their horses get grazing muzzles on and come inside during the day for about eight hours. They're claiming that their horses are on the verge of foundering because of the grass. We have a few other horses who wear grazing muzzles and several more who don't. All of them are perfectly healthy and our local nutritionists and vet are happy with how they look. They say that their necks are crusty and that they have fat pockets, but they don't. And I even checked their weights from the spring until now, and both of the horses have lost a few pounds. The complaints are never, sorry, the complaints are never ending and making my job very difficult. I offered to mow down a field nice and short and let the sun essentially burn it so that it's not as healthy, but they're both tag teaming saying that it will still be too sugary. I love the fields and how they look and how healthy they are. I'm not sure why they have an issue with them, even when both of their horses are happy with grazing muzzles on to stop them from eating so much. Does anyone have any advice or how to deal with something si similar to this? I almost want to tell them to go tour any other farm near us and tell me what their fields look like. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Honestly, that's probably what I would tell them. Well, my first thought is like, your horse's health is your responsibility. Right. Like somebody else's pasture is, mm -hmm. yes, feeding your horse, but not, it's not yours to criticize. Just, yes. Critique. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so did you guys ever have borders that complained? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, we had some complaints like, so backstory, my grandparents are 
66 and 67 and um, they both have some health issues. My grandpa's had a shoulder surgery, so he can't do nearly as much around the farm as he wants to, and my grandma's disabled. Mm-hmm. So we have had complaints that, like, horses went without a round bale, round bale like, overnight. Like, they ate through it, and yeah. then there was just, like, no hay left in the round bale feeder, and they were on a pasture with the round bale feeder, and then my grandpa waited till morning to put a round bale in Mm -hmm. and they were like well yeah what are you gonna go out there in the middle of the night yeah like i'm talking 7 p.m he's like oh no they're out of you know they're out of hay and in the morning he wakes up first thing he does is put in hay well yeah that's a problem like they should they should never go without hay well first of all the hay is on a pasture yeah so jot that down real quick (laughs) (laughs) like so they're not starving they're not starving it's not dry law by any means and it's overnight yeah what's the matter they're, yeah, they've ate they've ate all day probably yeah. cleaning it up. Yeah, it's it was just crazy to me and he really does everything he possibly can and has always gone above and beyond for every animal on the mm-hmm. farm his or not. Yeah. So the one thing I have found working at multiple boarding facilities and having like a few boarders of my own is that people will bitch about anything literally like anything. literally they will find something to bitch about it doesn't matter how hard you work or how nice you try to keep your facilities there will they'll find something if there's nothing to bitch about they'll go around looking for something and so like like you said your horse's health is the owner's responsibility it's not the barn owner's responsibility the horses belong to you so if you think they're too fat do something else about it like the like it 100%. said in the post, like the horses wear grazing muzzles. Well, if they're still too fat, take them somewhere else. And like this person said, I want to just tell them to go look at somebody else's field. I probably would tell them that if there's other boarding barns in your area. I've told my boarders before that complain. If you don't like the way your horses are cared for here, that's fine. But you need to find other arrangements for them because 100%. there's only so much you can do. And most of the time, it's people complaining that the pasture isn't good enough. So then when your pasture's too nice, people will complain about that too. Literally. Like, you absolutely cannot win. And I think it's funny when people also complain that the pasture's not good enough because it's generally the people that just bring on more horses. Yeah. And don't really consider what that is doing to the pasture. Right. To the ecosystem. Like, And if they're affects. offering to literally mow the grass so short that it just pretty much dies... To appease the boarders, I'd tell them to kick rocks or something. Like, no. Seriously. Because then the other boarders will be like, well, why is the pasture so short all the grass is dying? <laughs> like, And, like, if you ruin your pasture that way, obviously there's you can buy grass seed and start over, but oh, grass that's seed is so, much so work. expensive. Yeah, and to have to, like, till it in and keep it watered and not let the weeds get out of control. Like, no. I would just tell them, find, find a dry lot place. And, like, there are people... I've noticed, like, there's the type of horse owners that will constantly be afraid of their horse getting fat. And then there's also the type of horse people that, like, just think their horse needs to eat 24 hours out of the day. Which, obviously, it's good for horses to eat and munch the small meals throughout the day. But, I mean, some people, I've met horse people that will feed their horses, like, dairy quality, solid, bright green alfalfa, and then pile 10 pounds of sweet feed a day on top of it because they think that their horse is, like, starving to death or something something that was told to me when i bought my last horse who was a thoroughbred and lost a lot of weight after being warmed um was you know forage is the most important thing Mm -hmm. so if you're constantly just graining your horse and it doesn't have something to stick to there's absolutely no point yeah so people that you know buy all the supplements and that that's great but if your horse is getting bad hay it yeah. does not matter right so and people don't people just think like grain is the end all be all and mm-hmm. 50 bucks for this 50 pound bag that's oh gotta, my gosh that's got to be great stuff like okay but look at your hay right it's and that's the majority of your horse's diet yeah but I don't know. Some people get so like hyper fixated, I feel like, on their horse's weight instead of just letting the horse regulate themselves. And like if these horses are actually on the verge of founder, it's good that they're wearing grazing muzzles. But if they don't, if they're not actually that fat, then there's not really anything you can do to convince their owners otherwise. I feel like once people get fixated on the feed and on their weight, then it's like it's so hard to get people off of it. 
It's like helicopter parenting. Yeah. Yeah, like, kind of. Because we have a, a horse right now at the barn I work at that she's like a 30-something-year-old Arab. Probably foundered 20 years ago. Cool. And so right now, like, she's ribby, but she wears a grazing muzzle on outside. She gets, like, literally a little handful of grain in the morning and night. Aww. And they just recently started adding, like, a bunch of Amplify on top of it because, like, she's skinny. And we've told her that. We told the owners that, and they're just like, oh, well, she has to wear the grazing muzzle outside because she has Cushing's. So the vet says she has to wear it. Okay, but she's skinny. And she has barely any teeth, so when I clean her stall, like, in the morning, you can see all, like, the wads of hay that she's tried to eat, and she can't eat it. She just spits it back out. And there's, like, there's alternatives to hay. I mean, there's, like, mm-hmm. alfalfa pellets. I know. Alfalfa That's cues. what I'm telling them. I'm like, why don't they just bring, like, Timothy grass pellets? You know, if they don't want her to have a bunch of sugar or whatever, just bring some Timothy grass pellets. And then at least she's getting food in her stomach, you know? Yeah. Like I said, adding, just adding a bunch of grain on top. People think it works and it just doesn't. Well, and they're not even giving her that much grain. And now they're just putting a bunch of Amplify on top of it. I'm like, so you're going to make her like fatter with the Amplify, but she's still like not eating enough. It's not, and it's not. So like you said, it probably won't even work. Yeah. Sticking in her stomach. It's just probably going right through her. Yeah. Oh, that's so so like the horse is skinny like you can see her ribs but they're still like fixated on her being fat yeah no. so and her feet look great like i would never guess the horse has ever foundered yeah my thoroughbred it was <clears throat> i was the one that was like oh my god he's too skinny he's too skinny he's too skinny and he was mainly just having top line issues but mm-hmm. you know when you see a horse lose 150 pounds after losing his winter coat and being wormed you're like oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah but literally alfalfa cubes and better hay was mm-hmm. the answer. Yeah. I mean, he never went on Amplify. He never went on anything crazy. Yeah. I should try that for BB, but. Not that Amplify is like crazy. I just mean like. It's really expensive too. Yes. It's like over 50 bucks for a bag. But anyway, I'd tell all those people to kick rocks and find somewhere else. Absolutely. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Next one is called Barn Drama. I get that every barn has a bit of drama, but how much is too much? We've got one woman who yells at people, another who stirs the pot and thinks her schedule is more important than everyone else's, and one more who shit talks everything from the footing to the turnout. The owner slash trainer knows what's going on, but these people continue with their bad behavior. Can I get some perspective? Is it, is it like this at your barn and any suggestions? Any thoughts? Yes. <laughs> A billion, of course. Okay, go ahead. So my grandma, when she started boarding, um, she was going to open it up to, like, the public and then quickly, quickly, quickly decided to just do friends. Mm -hmm. And the most important part of, or at least other than the horses being adequately cared for, the most important part of a good barn is the lack of drama Mm -hmm. between the boarders. I agree. Because... If it's a shitty place to hang out, if it's, like, somewhere you don't want to be because you don't want to be around the people, then, like, why would you want those people there? And you're not going to come for your horse. Yeah. Like, you're the kind of person that's like, oh, I love coming to the barn. I'm going to make sure X, Y, Z gets done. Horse gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Now you have to come to the barn and you hate the barn. Yeah. Your horse is suffering. Ugh. Or you're suffering because you decide to actually come to the barn, take care of the horse, whatever, and now, you're and now you get yelled at by somebody covered with just <laughs> yeah. drama. Yeah. No, I, I, we've never had that big of drama at any of the barns I've worked at, but like for my own barn, I, I personally don't think I would put up with it. If you have somebody yelling at other people, uh, no, not. um, we do have a pot stir, I guess <laughs> at the barn I work at now we had a border, um, I'll call her Mia and she knows one of the other girls that works at the barn so one of the other chore doers and she comes up to me one day and I was just telling her you know some people here are hard to work with but otherwise I like the job and she's like is it Casey and I said I mean maybe I guess sometimes she's like Casey used to work at the last barn that I boarded at and one day She was, Mia was out riding her horse in the arena and Casey comes into the arena, sits down on the mounting block and starts watching. 
So Mia like finished like rides her horse and stuff, and then she gets off. She's ready to put her horse away. And Casey <laughs> looks at her and she's like, mm, "That was boring." <laughs> <laughs> and Mia was like, "Well, what'd you think she was gonna dump my ass or something?" And Casey's like, "Yeah, I did actually." So she just got up and left. Oh God. And I was like, "What a bitch!" I would have been like, "What the fuck is your problem?" You know, like, I, like why do people have to just be assholes that you know? reminds me of my boyfriend's favorite thing to say like if i tell him a facebook comment that i think is just stupid or offensive or dumb yeah and he agrees with me he goes well just tell him one thing nobody fucking asked yeah <laughs> pretty <laughs> and I much facebook like yeah but st- it's hilarious so so i work with casey now and she kind of i don't know she stirs the pot and stuff and has a shitty thing to say about everyone else that works there and shit talks the barn manager and to the owner of the barn. And so it's just like, nobody likes that person, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to speak to her and go to staff meetings with her. And, and if it's a border there, then yeah, Yeah. I have a coworker that always has something to say and it's usually never anything nice. And we pretty much tell him all the Mm -hmm. time, go fuck yourself. Yeah. It's a regular occurrence. Yeah. So, I don't know. The girl that talks shit about everything from the footing to the turnout, I'd tell her to kick rocks too. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. I mean, unless you're offering to help or to fix the problem, like, fuck off. You being here is a privilege. Yeah. Like, yeah. People don't realize that, like, I don't have to board to you. I don't have to keep you in my barn. So if you hate it here so much or you don't like the way that the place is run, then go somewhere else. Or I will ask you to go somewhere else. And a lot of boarding places right now that have rates that people think are reasonable are not Mm -hmm. making money or making pennies. Especially, you know what, it's always the stall board people. It's always the people who pay $800 a month for a stall that think that they have the right to bitch and complain about every other thing in the barn when those are the people the barn is not making money off of. Yeah. Your barn is making money off of the pasture borders. Because because you don't have to do as much work. You don't have to pay for the work. You don't have to have as much maintenance. You don't have to have all the amenities. You don't have to have a climate control or whatever. So the people that think that they are entitled to more because they're paying for a stall, wrong. (laughs) We're not making any money off of you. So. Yeah. It's the low maintenance people that were making money. Yeah. And at the last barn that I worked at, um, the people in the stall barn, this was a pretty big facility. There was like 40 horses there. Um, the people in the stall barn would get all pissed off and snooty about the pasture boarders using the barn. Like they'd bring their horse in to ride or whatever. And they'd use the cross ties and the stall boarders would be like, "Ah." who said they're allowed to use the cross ties? Oh, the money they pay. (laughs) It's like, because they also board here like you don't own the whole barn just because you rent a stall um so if they like use the cross ties in front of that person's stall they'd complain or they'd com- they'd just bas- basically complain if the pasture borders were taking up any space in the barn god forbid they exist yeah and they? the barn manager basically had to be like you guys can knock it off with the shitty attitude or you guys don't need to use the barn either because they are paying their board just the same as you are just because their horse lives outside doesn't mean they don't get to use the barn. Yeah, and I was so fortunate when I had my horse and I was not at my grandma's anymore and I was boarding. There was, like, hardly any boarders there, and it was basically just the owners with their own outfit that had a little extra pasture space, a few extra stalls that boarded for, you know, a couple people. But it was amazing because I never talked to anybody ever. Yeah. I, I literally sometimes wouldn't even interact with, the barn owner to pay board other yeah. than a text message that said, okay, uh, here's where I set board. Have a good month. And you were probably their favorite boarder. <laughs> and yeah, like literally one time I was out of, out of state, the first and the second, mm-hmm. and I paid board on the third and I texted them and I apologized and they're like, oh yeah, no, we weren't worried. Yeah. <laughs> your barn owner, most likely if you pay your board on time and you like, just come make sure your horse is still alive and take care of it and don't talk to them for any other reason other than what's necessary they'll probably like you which i 
I'm on the fence about whether or not they like me now, though, because I they do Western Pleasure, and I texted the barn owner after not talking to her in like a year or two, and said, "Hey, do you know of any local um, English writing barns?" Mm-hmm. And she has an iPhone, and I could see that she read my message and she never did responded. Not respond, so. <laughs> Someone posted, what's the best drama story you've seen or heard of in your barn? Some recent things taking place in a local horse groups got me thinking. Horse people have so much drama. What is the worst horse drama story? And in the comments, somebody somebody put their story in the comments. So, okay, not a story from the barn, but my local 4-H club. Oof. I know 4-H clubs can vary in quality, but mine was great. A group of people, most of our clinics, fo- oh sorry, a great group of people, and most of our clinics focused on horse safety, groundwork, desensitization, proper horse care. There were multiple families in our club with young children and who were close friends outside of 4-H as well. So it definitely had the feeling like it was one big family. Well, Two of these families involved two husband and wife pairs who were best friends. Let's call them Fred and Wilma and Barney and Betty. Good they, choice in names. <laughs> yeah. They had young kids around the same age and were always together. I think Barney and Betty even boarded their horses out at Fred and Wilma's place. It's probably my fourth or fifth year in this club, and the year had just started after our first monthly meeting the club had gone to a local a and w for coffee and snacks it was a tradition i sat with my mom my 4-h buddy and her mom when wilma approaches and asks if she can sit with us we say sure thinking this is odd because wilma is usually with fred and betty and barney that's when we realized fred was absent and had been for the meeting how's it going wilma my friend's mom asks somewhat apprehensive as wilma sits down Oh, good, Wilma spits out as she drags an extra chair up to the table. Fred had an affair with Betty. Shocker. (laughs) Silence. And that was the beginning of the end. (laughs) Both couples got divorced, and Betty officially started dating Fred. Every 4-H event was a little more than awkward, and the club was never the same. The big family was gone. The adults fought a lot in passive-aggressive ways. I quit after that year, but I was close to aging out anyways. My favorite part, though, was when my 4-H buddy and I joined Wilma in walking in the rodeo parade that spring, not 4-H related, and Wilma chose to carry a huge flag advertising her divorce lawyers. (laughs) (laughs) You know, horse people have a thing with sleeping with each other's wives. Yeah. I don't get it, but it it seems to be a cowboy thing. I, so when I... Or a horse dad thing, apparently. When I met my boyfriend, I met him on Tinder and i still like stayed with my grandparents had horses was very much a little cowgirl and he was a city boy because i would not swipe right on cowboys yeah (laughs) wouldn't do it i said i can train one but you can't i can train the cowboy into one but you can't train the cowboy out of one (laughs) right i don't recommend them i I haven't met a cowboy yet that i would be like yeah i would date him yeah no no none of them i uh oh my god oh I had to laugh a little bit when the story started that it was a 4-H club because this is mm-hmm. literally middle schoolers and high schoolers. What could possibly oh go God. wrong? Awkward. Yeah. Okay. Somebody else commented on the same post. We moved to this amazing barn and it was lovely. And the vibe was great. The owner was great. No drama. We got this new girl who came in and everybody loved her. She had an OnlyFans and that was her job. People respected it, but some older ladies clutched their pearls, but the majority was fine. Anyway, one day another boarder, we'll call her A, screamed at the OF boarder, we'll call her B, because A found out that her husband had subscribed to B's OF. B was chill about it, offered to block her husband and refund A the money he spent. A was on a warpath and demanded B get kicked out. The barn owner was like... She didn't technically do anything wrong. This is between you and your husband, which only pissed off A more. Eventually, B did not leave, the, or eventually B did leave the barn, not because of the drama, but because she made enough money on her OnlyFans to buy her own farm. Good for her. I know, right? Yeah. Sounds like the wife was a little jealous. Sorry, he doesn't pay attention. To which you, you know anymore. what? That's between her and her husband. Exactly. She should. You should probably work that out of. Uh, the boundaries in your marriage but uh i just thought those were funny 
I've never, <laughs> never had an OnlyFans situation in our barn. I just, I think it's crazy that like people are just so entitled that they think like, yeah, you have to kick out a, a good paying customer. That might be a great border because I don't like her here. Yeah. Excuse you? Like, oh my gosh, she's a sex worker. Okay. Okay. And you probably work a dead end job that doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. So she's doing a lot better. She just bought her own farm. So. Yeah, exactly. Good for her. Okay. This next one is called, should I find a new barn? Okay, so I'm 14 and female, and I've been going to this barn for a few months now. I do barn work in exchange for lessons because, unfortunately, the equestrian world is extremely expensive, and I'm not very wealthy at all. I've been doing really good at this barn. I love the owner, my instructor, and the horses. We have a communication issue, though. She never really responds to my messages when I ask if she needs me to come out or if she wants me to come out next week or anything. I know she's seeing the messages. I'm usually out there from 9 to 1 p.m. And one day I had to leave a little earlier for an appointment. She never answered my text the day before when I told her. But when my ride came to get me that day, I had to leave earlier, and her assistant said, sorry, I forgot you're leaving early today. I hadn't told anyone else, so the owner had, had to have said something. She's super nice and communicative once I'm actually there, but she never talks to me otherwise. I tried to ask about a schedule change due to school starting soon, but never got an answer. I know she can easily replace me, and since I'm not paying for lessons, she's not losing much, but I feel like the communication is really needed right now. I can't talk to her about it unless I'm there since she never answers me. I can't go out there without texting her and asking her first, what should I do? I really like this place. I don't want to switch barns, but I feel like I might have to. I'm not good at confrontation, so it's hard for me to actually talk about this communication issue without worrying she's going to take it as me being rude. I apologize if this is seen twice. I posted it on... Oh, sorry. Anyways. So, yeah. What do you do when your barn owner never responds to your texts? Well, so when I first started boarding at the barn that I started boarding at, the first thing I said was like, I'll let you know every time I come out because I thought that's what people do. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, you pay to have a horse here. Just don't come before this time in the morning or after this time at night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, communication was great. Few and far between, like I said, you know, yeah, here's your board. Have a good month. But I didn't have any issues. And I feel like that's how it should be is like, yeah, you know here's your hours. Don't come before here or after here. And if you're working there, you know, here's your hours that we need you to do some working. Mm -hmm. And other than that, like it should be yeah. pretty straightforward. You can come when you need to come. Yeah. I feel like it's probably an issue if she needs, if she's not allowed to be there without asking. Yeah. A hundred percent. I've always told my boarders that too. Like Melanie usually would tell me like when she's going to come see her horses. And I was like, girl, you don't have to like tell me when to see them. My only like expectation I guess is I tell the boarders not to come past 8 p.m. yeah and that's very reasonable especially in the winter when it gets dark at like four o'clock which I really want to look up this new barn that um I'm going to be boarding at because they have hours as well yeah and it's very like cut and dry on their website there's no question mm -hmm. about it and I think that's just the most appropriate way to go about it because then you don't have to wonder like well you know yeah why does she get to stay later than me and blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, nobody does. So, okay. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. I could see people that would want to come earlier than 8 a.m., but mm -hmm. let's be honest. If this was like any other business, not a horse business, 8 a.m. would be very reasonable. So. Right. And then Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's pretty reasonable. And literally right on their website, barn and property hours. Yeah. And I even tell my boarders too, like, if it's an emergency and you have to be out here past 8 p.m., just text me and let me know so that I'm not, like, walking out of my house in my underwear at 9 o'clock at night and there you are, you know? Yeah. Um, or if you have to come, if you're going to a show at 5.30 in the morning, just text me that you're pulling in that early. Like, right. So That's going to happen. Yeah. It's not a big deal, but just give me a heads up if you're going to be going with outside, outside the expectations but you shouldn't have to ask every time no. you're you can go to the barn and if she's not I guess if she's not like giving you enough communication or telling you what you're supposed to be doing I'd just start I'd ask her to leave you a list or I guess just start making a list of things that need to be done um 
or if she can't communicate to you and you can't pay for the lessons or for your board, then I, I would probably find somewhere else. Yeah, ultimately, I feel like this one would be one where you would just need to leave in the end. Yeah. Because, like, what frustrates me about some of the barns that I've worked at is that if you if your barn doesn't have a barn manager if the owner and if the owner is owns and managing the business then they need to have good management skills i get really tired of people running a business that don't have good management skills so if you can't manage your customers or you can't communicate with your customers you shouldn't be running the business or you should hire somebody else to do it for you or how do you expect to keep your clientele especially like considering the Yes, you have to make an investment to have a barn manager and pay somebody else. Mm -hmm. But like I said, that's an investment because that is weight off of your shoulders mm -hmm. for so many situations. Yeah. Well, and even if, even though this girl's like not getting paid monetarily, she's getting paid in lessons. Like I would still consider her an employee. hundred percent. If you don't have the time of day to talk to your employees, you shouldn't have employees. So if I were her, I would probably just leave because I don't have time to sit there and wonder or then get in trouble because you're leaving early or not doing stuff when you haven't been told what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I, that's kind of a crazy situation that nobody should ever be put in. Not crazy, but yeah. Annoying. Yes. Rude. Okay. This next one is called Groundwork and Manners of Aborted, aborted Horse. I fill in at a local barn here and when regular when the regular staff calls out. I'm I'm gaining confidence in leading horses. However, I have two horses at this barn I still struggle with. I don't ride or own horses. I just like them. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to ask to do groundwork with someone else's horse. I just don't want her to hurt me or to get her hurt. She's sweet unless I bring her out anything other than first in the morning. Okay. Some of the comments say it's inappropriate. Just turn her out first. Uh, somebody said, ask the barn manager or your boss to give you some quick lessons on how to lead correctly. If you can't lead the horses safely or confidently, please, please, please ask an experienced person to do it. Do not get yourself or the horse injured because you don't want to ask for help. This sounds like it might be a mix of two things. Inexperience in the mm -hmm. hands of the person leading the horse and disrespect in the horse. Right. So. I'd like to know from an experienced person's point of view if the horse is really that bad. But if she's not having issues with any of the other horses, then it's it, it's probably a horse issue. Yeah. Even And even if it's a small horse issue, if you don't have experience with horses, I mean, they're huge. Mm -hmm. A small issue to, like me could be a huge issue to someone who yeah. doesn't do this regularly. But what do you feel about like disciplining or doing some sort of groundwork with somebody else's horse? I now like in the moment, say a horse does something very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. There should be an agreement that if you're going to handle my horse and they are going to physically hurt you, mm -hmm. you should be able to do what you have to do to get out of that situation safely. Yeah. And you know, I it, agree. If that means an elbow to a horse's jaw to keep him from, you know, biting your neck or face mm -hmm. or whatever, then that's what that means. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like the on the flip side, you should definitely have a conversation with every person whose horse you're going to be regularly handling. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are your boundaries? Like, how do you discipline your horse? How do you go about this? Because some horses are more sensitive than others. Yeah. And some horses are more aggressive than others. Mm -hmm. So... You don't want to get caught in, well, I never said you could treat my horse that way. Yeah. Just right. know what you got to do. The ones that I have to deal with at work, um, and our, our barn management has been very good about encouraging us employees that if we feel the need to have to discipline a horse to go ahead and do it. And if a horse is displaying dangerous, rude, unhandleable behavior, I am to report that to our barn manager. She deals with the owners. But for me, like I work at this barn three to four days a week. I'm there almost every day with these same horses. So I, I will correct them if for whatever reason it's necessary. Most of them are really good, but we've had some in the past that have almost run me over, um, have reared up. They pull back so hard. They pull the halter off their face. Um, just like stupid shit. And so the one that has nearly run me over several times, 
Um, I have hit and smacked him before, but I'm to the point where I'm like, I am working with your horse every single freaking day. You're not here with your horse every day. I am. So if I am going to deal with this horse or if you want it to go out to the pasture, then I'm going to discipline it if I feel like it, it, if I have to. And like I said, I only do this if it's like a dangerous behavior, like bolting through the gate, almost running me over, constant spooking, shit like that. And And the last time that horse almost ran me over, we have put a stud chain on it ever since. And that's the thing. It's like, if you're, if you don't really, if you're not like a paid employee, like this person Mm -hmm. is just kind of doing this and because she enjoys it. Yes. Then you need to have a conversation with owners and know yeah because you're not covered under that barn's insurance yeah but if i'm a paid employee mm-hmm. and your horse does stupid shit every single day i'm mm-hmm. there it is reaping what it sows mm-hmm. and well like at my barn i'm a w2 employee so i'm under their workers comp so if i get injured they have to pay me workers comp and so it's like that. so do you <laughs> want me to get injured or not so i would suggest you just let me discipline this horse but like this girl says she doesn't really have horse experience so for her, I wouldn't encourage her to discipline any horses unless no. she learns from someone more experienced. But I personally, I think it's okay if you are an employee of a barn to discipline other people's horses if it's necessary. If they're exhibiting like dangerous behaviors or something that could turn dangerous. Yeah. I think where Original Poster is at and where like you were at with your barn are two so completely different places Yeah, that it's, it's really just hard to say like, well, yeah. you should just do what I do. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a, okay. This is a good one. Is falling off necessary sometimes to teach a lesson? This is something that's been on my mind recently. I worked as a horse instructor at a camp over the summer. I had one kid who it was his first time riding in his life. Oh, I thought you were sneezing. No, I'm good. Um, He would take off his boots and sit crisscross on the horse when I was attending other kids, or or he'd take off his helmet. One day, he was trying to steer a horse. When he failed, he yanked the reins back as hard as he could and punched her neck before I ran up and stopped him. I wanted to dismount him and lose his riding privileges for the day, but my boss stopped me before I could, later saying that the parents would be upset if they found out I had forced him to dismount. I don't work there anymore, but when talking to some friends who were horse people, they expressed the belief that sometimes it's necessary for kids like him to fall off to learn a lesson. Personally, some of my worst falls have taught me my greatest lessons, but I'd love to hear other perspectives. What are your thoughts on it? (laughs) Well, if I was working in a barn and... Okay, baby. What the hell? (laughs) If I was working at a barn and the kid was being physically abusive to a horse, I mean, that Mm -hmm. sounds pretty extreme, even Mm -hmm. though it's a kid. Yeah, there would be a dismount, and it would be me pushing off. (laughs) Like, there is absolutely no... I would either... If the kid's too big, I'm pushing you, I'm yanking you you. off. I mean... A lot of people in the comments are saying that the kid should be expelled from the program um, and not be welcome-backed. Um, cause like I grew up working at a horse camp. So like, yeah, if the barn owner or the, the ranch owner saw one of the campers doing that to a horse, they would absolutely either be asked to go home. They wouldn't get to ride the horse. Um, probably take it up with the parents and see what the parents want to do, but it wouldn't be tolerated. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, um, it's one thing to like, you know, kick a little too hard cause you're getting frustrated, but mm-hmm. like to start punching, yanking when there's metal in a horse's mm-hmm. mouth, you're getting ripped off that horse. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. If it was my own kid, obviously they would get yelled at or not be allowed to, to ride or to handle their horse. But if they got dumped, I probably wouldn't feel bad for them. Yeah. Well, cons- actions have consequences. Right. right. What a shame. Right. And like one thing when I went to horse camp growing up, was the camp I went to taught like respect for the animals and like everything we did like if we had downtime the barn owner was telling us you go out and keep grooming your horses they work all day for us you can go out and give them a good brush or whatever like this is their massage time go out and treat your horses well um so uh, yeah she she would have a freaking cow if if one of our campers did that Oh, and I don't work with kids, if it's not obvious by my answer to that question. I don't prefer it. <laughs> I just don't. It'd definitely never be allowed in my lessons. Like, but, um... I, so I work in pharmacy, and um, 
there's apparently this unspoken rule that you never, ever, ever pick up anyone else's kids. Well, this kid ran behind the counter before we remodeled and was next to, like, where we were counting pills. Oh, jeez. And I kids around up, pills picked her up under the shoulders and just started like carefully carrying her to her dad and my other co-workers like put her down put her down i'm like okay sorry They're like you do not pick up another kid and i'm like what if my co-worker next to me would have dropped a pill and kid was like oh look at that yeah. this kid was like no kidding in things go into mouth age <laughs> and i was like oh i didn't know that unspoken rule but yeah good thing i don't work with kids that. Um, all right. Let's see. Okay. This next one is called advancing in horse riding. I've been taking one hour horse lessons every week. I did my sixth one today. I'm currently doing Western though. I want to try English so far. I've learned walk, control the reins, turn, trot on the lunge line, trot off the lunge line and how to lunge at a walk, trot and canter. I decided I want to keep doing this. So I'm getting my own boots, helmet, and ball to practice balance. I read an article that basically said, if you don't own a horse and you only do a lesson once a week, you can't advance or show. No expert musician practices for only an hour a week. That got me thinking, am, I am content taking one lesson a week and I can't really pay for any more. In the future, I might lease and help around the barn, but I feel like I'm struggling to figure out how to guide the horse and be in control. Also, what is a soft hand and how do I do that? I'm not sure if I ever want to compete, but if I did, would I have to have my own horse? Are there many differences between English and Western? I'm a beginner and I would appreciate if I could get some tips on how to be a better rider and what you guys do besides lessons. Okay, so the main point of this post was, can you actually advance or show if you only ride once a week? Well, I mean, I think that absolutely, like, if you're learning something new every week, you mm -hmm. can. But I'm also biased because, like I said, I'm signing up for lessons again, right? Yeah. And I – so the schedule goes, like, by month. So there's, like, certain um, amounts of lessons every day, and we get a schedule for a month. You sign up, and then the next schedule comes out before the next month begins. And I have yet to see a new name – or see a repeat name. Yeah. Like, people are – I'm, I'm just, like, spitting out names. Mm -hmm. Reagan on one day. Nova the next. Megan the next week. Ariel the next week. Yeah. Like, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Yeah. You either are going to get in there and do a lesson once a week, or you're not going to get one at all. Mm -hmm. So, people that are like, oh, you're not going to advance. Huh. What else I, am I going to do, first of all? I own nine horses, and I think I only ride once a week. <laughs> yeah. Like, I... If that. When I had three, three was my max. I mean... There there was a month where I think I groomed a horse, mm -hmm. and that was it. Like, I yeah. didn't ride him at all. I think, especially if you're at the beginner phase, riding once a week is plenty. Yeah, 100%. Like, because you're going to improve a lot just in the first 10 weeks, I think. Yeah, and it's a lot of – I feel like in the beginning, it's a lot of thinking and not a lot of doing. Mm -hmm. You have to, like, mentally – Okay, like, this is what I need to do at my next lesson. This is how I need to improve. Yeah. Versus, like, like say you're a beginner and you're taking your very first lessons. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's a lot of thinking about body placement, that kind of thing. Yeah. Versus if you're doing barrel racing lessons and you run in the 2D and you're trying to run in the 1D, it's a lot of doing. Yeah. Like, I need to place my body in this spot going 20 miles an hour, mm -hmm. however freaking fast they go I don't know anymore yeah and not that there's not thinking in in that situation and not doing in the other but they're just you're in completely different wavelengths right I think as somebody gets more serious to into the sport depending on what sport you are wanting to do and if you're riding a lesson horse it might honestly just depend on the factors because like if you're wanting to learn dressage something that's super technical and super detail oriented on a lesson horse that's getting ridden by 10 other people every week it, it might be hard to catch up to doing something like that once a week if you're not riding the horse regularly and building that relationship with the horse but as a beginner that's just getting into it you're gonna advance a lot through the first I would say it's like six months because it's not because, fine tuning you're learning everything right you're learning zero. everything from scratch and learning how, you know, your muscle memory and 
you know, just basic writing and handling skills. Um, but like I said, as you advance or if you want to get more into one sport, and that might not even be for a year or two. And by that time, you'll probably be writing just fine. But I think it all depends. Um, I looked into becoming a lesson instructor at a barn that's not terribly far from me. And this barn is very lesson oriented. It's like a lesson barn. That's what they do. They don't really board um, or train or anything. They just do lessons and camps. So they, they're set up to where like you pay monthly, like you pay like a membership, like the oh, YMCA almost. Yeah. And so you just like pay the 300 something dollars a month. And that includes like so many lessons per week. And they do that because they want the kids coming multiple times a week so that they can work on their skill and their riding ability on the same horse because that horse is getting ridden by multiple other people too. So they have found that the little kids that come once a week don't make as much progress because they're not, you know, working with that horse consistently enough as these other kids that are coming four times a week. Yeah. And so like, and when, so I did take English writing lessons for like two months when I was like seven so I'm speaking from 15 years ago. Yeah. But like in the very beginning, it was a lot of, um, okay, here's what I'm, it's like math class. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm teaching you. Go home and practice sitting in a chair this way. So like that yeah. kind of thing. And that's something that you can do at home. But like a kid that's, oh my God, where was this train of thought literally going? <laughs> I don't know. We were talking about the lesson barn that I was. Yeah. And then the kids that come only once yeah. a week don't make very much progress. But the kid that needs to come multiple times a week is the kid that's like farther than that. Yeah. And right. Is more advanced at home. <laughs> yeah. So I think like going back to what they were asking about, like if you're in the very beginning, you're fine. Yeah. Once I think a once is... a week is fine for a good while. But and yes, then... agree that once you get going more or if you're at a more, not competitive barn, but like a bigger barn, yeah. then you're going to need. Yeah. It'll to... just depend what direction you want to go with it and yeah, how but serious you want to be about somebody it. Somebody telling you like you're six lessons in somebody <laughs> telling you that's not enough is probably speaking from a position of what they think is. Yeah. They're probably way more advanced yeah. and are doing harder things. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's all the horse stories I have for now. So, thanks for reacting to those with me. It's a lot more fun than what I would have been doing <laughs> when just sitting in my cabin looking at yeah, my phone. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of downtime today. I'm surprised they didn't have, like, a, a lunch type thing or something going on. Yeah, and then there's, like, a, a contest at, what was it? Yeah, what is that? They're doing a, a best-dressed cowgirl yeah, and cowboy dressed cowgirl cowboy contest and they're like we need last night they said we need judges and i'm like you couldn't pay me yeah <laughs> i don't even know what that means like right because is it my, serious or not yeah. and it's like is it just my opinion of who i think looks good because the yeah. person sitting next to me probably thinks i look stupid yeah like, or is it like more like a halloween thing yeah. where you get this is cowboy country as you can look. I don't know. I, no I guess idea. we'll have to find out. I don't have anything else to do, so we might go down there and watch it. But Yeah, I think if I go back to my cabin for too long, I'll just fall asleep or eat 15 Oreos. Yeah, we bought um, we bought those Nutella cookies. Have you had those? Oh, oh my God, they're so good. Yeah, I... So I not they're only expensive, I, though. Nutella anything is expensive. Why yeah. is that? It's just freaking hazelnuts. It can't yeah. be that hard. But I bought... Um, Oreos and I like the mint Oreos the best and they didn't have mint Oreos in a regular size so I bought family size. I don't like when my, <laughs> my Oreos God. go stale so I really have to get down to eating these. Oh my gosh. Do you like I really only like the cookies? No. So, I like the cream. Really? Yeah. Ugh. I always like squeeze them so that all the cream comes out the sides <laughs> and then I just wipe it off. You're like it gross. It drives so Thomas anyway. nuts cuz he'll like open the pack of oreos and there's all this filling just in there that i've <laughs> scraped off and i'm like it's not that good or there's too much i feel like there's too much filling even in a normal size oreo remember the mega stuff i don't know if they still I make those didn't like those one like single day half an inch of cream yeah, no thank you but no but back to something that we talked to on the, talked about on the trail coca-cola just came out with a oh, yeah oreo flavored coke it tastes like coke zero 
and a bite of an Oreo cookie at the same time. So there's no, like, cream element. Yeah. But, which I think, so, I thought it was good, but Oreo came out with Coke Oreos, and the cream oh is Coke-flavored, and it has, like, right. Pop Rocks those. in it or something. Really? To oh, mimic, wow. like, carbonation, uh-huh. and I think that is so disgusting. <laughs> those I might try, actually. No, that I couldn't do that. I could do the drink, but if I see, like, my rule is, like, if I'm eating soup... And there's something sharp in there or like crunchy, too crunchy. I'm not eating soup for a week. Really? So if I'm eating Oreos. So you don't put crackers in it? It depends on the soup. (laughs) I might put like a couple on top of chicken noodle. Uh Uh-huh. But like if I'm eating an Oreo, it should not have freaking pop rocks in it. Yeah. That's not. A texture thing. Yep. Not happening. Did you have that? I think it. I think it was Coke. I don't think it was Pepsi. They did like, um, what was it? Like the space flavor or something that tasted like marshmallow. Oh, was it DreamWorks? Coke yeah, DreamWorks? I think so. That was so disgusting. Really? I liked it. And I get to, I get to diss on however many I want because my boyfriend mm-hmm. works for Coke. So he oh, brings yeah. them all home before like, like the day before. He just gets a bunch of free shells. pop. Yeah. Oh, and he... If you're ever wondering, like, where does expired pop go? It goes mm-hmm. in a cooler for the employees to bring home as they want. Hell yeah. Dude, when I used to work at the store, like, all of the expired food or whatever, like, they'd just let us take it home. Well, yeah. Which they're not supposed to do, but what it's they like. they do? Throw it away? Otherwise? Yeah. Yeah, they would. Yeah. And so, like, our manager at the time was like, well, there's no sense in just, like, wasting it. So, if I guess if anyone wants it, just take it home. Yeah. And, like, apparently, I've learned a lot from Dang, a Coca-Cola salesman. Um, pop expires relatively quickly. Really? Yes. I can't Why? remember the exact, but it's not like the the actual expiration date. I mean, when it starts to taste nasty is like yeah. years. But um, the expiration date they put on it is not very. Well, like most things just have an expiration date on it these days because they have to sell it that yeah, way. Yeah, they have to. It's so ridiculous. I eat all kinds of expired food, and Thomas, like, is this big freaking chicken, and, like... If it's, like, sour cream, and it's past the expiration date, I'm checking for mold, and then yeah. I'm eating it anyway. Yeah. Not with mold in it, but... But if it doesn't, like, taste rotten or anything, yeah. like, I'll usually go for it. Like, people always say, I or will yogurt. not drink milk past the expiration date. A, the, yeah, the that's Thomas. The next day, it's not moldy Yeah, mom. that's Thomas. He's so, like, oh, this, this half gallon of milk that's already half gone... Looks like it expired two days ago. Should I drink it? I'm like, well, you yeah, already it started. Was, yeah, it's been cold. Like, just drink it. Oh, yeah. So the drugstore near where my boyfriend and I live does this thing. They don't sell milk quick enough, but they get too much in. Mm-hmm. So if it's like two days away from expiring, they drop it down to half price. Yeah. And if it's the day it expires, they drop it down to 25 cents. So wow. we have a thing where we stop at the drugstore for milk. Heck, yeah. But, okay, so the USDA recommends consuming unopened diet sodas within three months of the expiration date. Oh, that didn't answer. Never mind. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted how quickly does the best of use date, like, come up. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I'm the queen of eating expired food. It doesn't Literally, like, me at people all. always say, like, oh, what about sour cream? It's freaking... It's already sour, it's so... It's already sour. <laughs> as long as it's not too sour. As long as it doesn't make me sick. I'll go for it. And plus, you're not going to find out it makes you sick till after you eat it, so you might as right. well just eat it. Right. There was one time I ate. I <laughs> this is when I was younger, so I still live with my parents, and like you know, I could just eat all day long in the summertime, and I just like ate a block of cream cheese. Oh, that sounds delicious right now. Yeah, in the fr- <laughs> there was just a block of cream cheese in the fridge, and I was hungry, and we didn't have anything else to eat, so I was like, I'll eat this. Oh man. I was so sick the next day. I was like, shit. <laughs> That's okay. So since me and Michaela and um, my grandma and Michaela's boyfriend, Thomas, are all out uh, camping, obviously somebody that we have been talking about is left at home, and that is my boyfriend, mm. Derek. And I, on Monday, made chicken Alfredo. And yesterday, which was Friday, he messaged me, are leftovers still good? Now... I will say I'm a weenie with chicken. I don't eat it past four four days that it's been cooked. Yeah. But I didn't want to hear from home about how terrible it was that there was no food in the house. So I was like, yep, still great. <laughs> They're probably fine. <laughs> and I, I did send him the link to Michaela's podcast. So when he hears this, <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. 
I hope your stomach feels great today. It was probably fine. Probably, but... You we'll know. find out. <laughs> <laughs> when I get home and he's like, I was really sick Saturday and I don't know why. I know no, why. I don't know either. <laughs> Weird. Crazy how that works. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, but thanks, Marissa, for coming on this episode. Going to have to do it again. This yeah. Really enjoyable. Hopefully it wasn't that bad. I was terrified, in yeah. case anyone was wondering. It's not that bad once you get to talking and f- forget that this microphone's in front of you, but all right, guys, we will see you guys in the next episode, and don't forget to follow us and stuff, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, so <laughs> bye.